What's happening guys? Welcome to the video. My name is Jay Yadlovsky and this video is actually going to serve a few different purposes. So what are we going to be talking about in this video? Well, the first thing is I wanted to help bring some awareness to a field of work and study that I honestly was not even aware of until about a year ago. And that is audio description. I'll give you the backstory on all this in a minute here. So we're going to be talking about audio description, what it is, why you might want to use it and how you do it. And once we understand what it is, I wanted to talk about how to set up DaVinci Resolve to be able to do voiceover work as well as dialogue replacement. So it's just going to be a lot of stuff in this video. It's probably going to be pretty long. I'll timestamp everything for you. So whatever you're interested in, you can just jump to those parts. So just let me give you a little backstory on this whole video and why I'm making it. So about a year ago, I got an email from a wonderful professor named Margaret at Ryerson University. And Ryerson University is up in Canada, up in Toronto. And she explained that there's this whole field of study that she's a professor of that is called audio description. And I had no idea what audio description was. So I think it's important we bring a little bit of awareness to what audio description is. And this video is really going to be set up to help students in that audio description program at Ryerson, as well as any other audio description courses around the country or the world, how to get set up to be able to do what you need to do in DaVinci Resolve. I was lucky enough to ask to come and speak at one of their virtual classes last year and it was really great to sit with the students and just kind of hear their struggles and challenges when working with DaVinci Resolve and one of the reasons they want to use Resolve is because it's free right it's a great program that Blackmagic puts out for everybody to use and as a student I mean let's be honest if you've been a student before in college you know hey we don't all got a lot of money right so being that you can use DaVinci Resolve for free is a huge benefit to any of the students in that particular program or similar programs. So we're gonna cover a lot of different stuff here. Again, like I said, I'm gonna timestamp it so you can jump around, come back to the video, find the things that you need. And if you ever have questions, definitely leave a comment down below. That's kind of the, the, the basic premise of the video here, who it's for. It's really for that specific group of students at Ryerson, but I think my whole audience can benefit from learning about audio description and then seeing how to do voiceovers, how to get things set up here in Resolve, how to do dialogue replacement, and just kind of little ins and outs and tips and tricks on just how to make your voiceovers because voiceovers can come in super handy even if you're just making YouTube videos or whatever it might be. You're probably going to want to do some voiceover work. It's going to help make your video better and take it to that next level. So with that background kind of said, let's jump into the first section here is what is audio description? All right, so let's get into what is audio description. So when we're talking movies, we're talking TV, we know that we've seen subtitles, right? And subtitles help people who can't hear be able to tell what's going on, right? You're able to read the subtitles on the bottom of the screen. But what if you can't see? You can hear, but you can't see. And that's where audio description comes in. So audio description is gonna help people who can't see understand what's going on in your TV show, your movie, your YouTube video, whatever it might be. Audio description is gonna basically describe events that are happening on the screen where you know maybe somebody's not talking, but they show a particular person, so you know what's happening in the scene. But if you can't see the TV, you don't know what's happening. So that's what audio description is. And I do have a sample coming up here for you in a second. And actually, I got some Netflix up here. I wanna show you that it is actually available on Netflix. I didn't even know this for a long time. But you can get to it and uh, you know use the audio description on Netflix shows and stuff like that. So it's pretty interesting. It's it's a great feature, something that I never thought of. Because if you can hear good, well, hey, use the senses that you got, right? So real quick, I do want to read the official definition of audio description for you, just because uh, you know, in case my description is not 100% on. I'm just trying to explain it the way that I understand it. Now I don't know a whole ton about it. I don't know the ins and the outs and the details and all that but this is my basic understanding of what it is and how it works. So the official definition here is, audio description is a second audio track produced in conjunction with the original audio for your show or movie. It provides descriptions of important visual elements of a film or a TV show for access by people who are blind or of low vision. So that's what I'm talking about. If you can't see the TV well, but you can hear fine, you don't know what's happening on screen, right? So that audio description is gonna describe what is happening in those scenes. So that way, somebody who can't see the TV, maybe you can't see it at all, maybe it's just you know fuzzy, you can't tell what's going on. It's gonna help you understand the story of what's happening in whatever it is you're watching. All right, so I got Netflix up here. Now check this out, you probably didn't know about this. You know there's the subtitle option, right? Well, I just have uh, whatever came up here, Son of Sam. So here, if I come into more info right over here, and then I come down a little bit and I go to audio and subtitles, I'm gonna click on that, 
So we've got our subtitles right here, right? Okay, no problem, right? You can turn them on, turn them off, different languages, we got that. But if you scroll down, look right here, we have audio, and we have English audio description. So now you can try this out and see what it sounds like. I do have a sample of a short clip here that uh, one of the students at Ryerson made. So I'm gonna show you that in a second so you can understand what it is, hear what it sounds like. But you've got the option here on Netflix if you wanna check it out with other shows too. So keep that in mind, you might wanna check that out, give it a try and see what it sounds like. But right now let's go roll into that uh, example that was provided by one of the students at Ryerson University. He gets up from his chair and walks towards the window. Later, Matt sits on the toilet on his phone. He reaches for a roll of toilet paper. White text on black screen, poop pals. Matt has written a note on toilet paper. It reads, I'm real bored and in desperate need of a friend. Please send help. He flushes the note down the toilet. He watches the note drain away. He leaves the bathroom and makes his way back into his room. He takes a seat at his desk. Someone or something slides a piece of paper out from the bathroom from under the door. Matt approaches cautiously. He picks up the note. It reads, okay, I'll be over at three. Later, at three, Matt waits by the bathroom door, throwing paper airplanes. A young woman exits the bathroom, carrying a frozen pizza and a Wii game. Later, the two of them sit together on the couch, playing Mario Kart. Poop House, starring Matt Dejanovic and Yusin Shi. Production assistant Yusin Shi, written, directed, shot, and edited by Daniel Karan. And that was made by Daniel Karan from Ryerson University. So Daniel, thanks so much for sharing that with us so that people can see what audio description is and how you kind of created. So if you guys noticed, you saw that he described things that were happening in the scene that were not audible, right? Nobody was talking about it, but he described what they were. So if you close your eyes and you watch that, that clip again, you can get a picture in your head of what's happening in the scene. Now there's tons of more information about it. And like I said, I don't know the ins and outs of audio description. I didn't study it. I didn't even know it was a thing. But I'm going to link to Ryerson's website down below in the description. You can go check that out. Just learn more about it. See what they offer. Uh, not that you need to go sign up because if you're watching this video and you're from Ryerson, you're already in the program. But for my regular audience here, you know, if it's something you just want to get a little more info about, definitely check out their uh, website. See what kind of classes they offer. I mean, it seems like a really cool field that I didn't even know existed. So very cool and very awesome. And it's great to be able to help people who can't see, be able to watch TV and watch movies, watch YouTube whatever it might be, audio description can really help them out. All right, so now that you kind of got an understanding of what audio description is, we're gonna get into DaVinci Resolve. I'm gonna show you how to quickly set up a project and how to start making your own voiceovers so that you can create you know, dialogue and audio description for any of your projects. Now this is, again, geared a lot towards the students that are at Ryerson or just studying audio description in general and how to use DaVinci Resolve. So I'm gonna timestamp everything as I've already mentioned so that way if you just wanna know how to set up the voiceovers, you can go jump ahead to that part of the video um, if you wanna know how to patch in your microphone and all that. I'm gonna to link to that stuff or uh, timestamp that stuff so that way you know how to, how to do that and you can just jump to the points that you want to. And if you want a complete crash course on DaVinci Resolve 17 that really shows you how to set everything up, the ins, the outs, the settings you wanna use and everything like that, I do have a free crash course right here on my YouTube channel. I'll link to that up here, you can click on that. Go check that out. I'll also put it in the description for you. So I'm not going to cover everything. Otherwise, this video would be forever long. It's already going to be a long one, I think. But uh, I'm not going to cover everything that I do in my crash course. You can head over to the crash course. Check that out. And if you ever have any questions, feel free to leave a comment somewhere. Do my best to help you out and answer any questions you might have. So with that said, we're going to go jump back into the studio, jump into Resolve. We're going to make a new project. I'm going to bring in some stock footage and just show you how to do a voiceover how to get things set up, how to do dialogue replacement and all that kind of stuff. So let's jump back into the studio. All right, so now we're ready to jump into DaVinci Resolve and get set up here to start recording our audio description as well as create our voiceovers and all that kind of stuff. So the first thing you wanna do and what I would recommend is get your microphone. Here, I've just got a little desktop microphone that I'm gonna be using. Uh, this one's by Seven Rhymes. You can check it out if you're interested. But you wanna make sure that you plug in your microphone before you start up Resolve because sometimes People run into weird issues where, you know, they start up Resolve and then they plug in either their headphones or their speakers or their microphone 
and then you have to go into preferences and change and everything. But if you set that up before you open Resolve, you should be good to go. So I'm gonna plug this guy in, and then we're gonna fire up Resolve. Real quick, I'm also assuming that you've already installed Resolve. I'm not gonna show you how to install it and uh, get it set up. If you wanna know how to do that, definitely check out my crash course I talked about earlier that's linked in the description below. That's gonna help get you set up with DaVinci Resolve if you need to know all that stuff. Now let's jump into making a project and how do we make our audio description and work with our voiceover from that point. So let's jump into Resolve and check it out. All right, so my microphone's hooked up. We're getting into Resolve. This is the first screen that I see when I open Resolve. Now we wanna create a brand new project. So in order to do that, in our project manager here, I'm gonna come down to new project and go ahead and click create new project. Then it'll come up, we wanna name it something. So I'm gonna uh, just call this uh, audio description voiceover. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit create new. All right, so now that we're in Resolve, what I like to do is I like to start by working in the edit tab. You can work in the cut tab if you're familiar with it, but I'm gonna jump over into the edit tab. So down here along the bottom, We've got our different tabs. We have, uh, and actually, you know, before we even get started so that we all are looking at the same thing here, I'm gonna come up to um, Workspace and down to Reset UI Layout. That way, hopefully you guys are seeing the same thing that I'm seeing, buttons are in the same spot and everything matches up. Now I am using DaVinci Resolve 17.4.1. So if you're on an older version, you might need to update, although things are pretty much the same. Uh, for most of what we're gonna be doing here. And if you're on a newer version and you're watching this sometime in the future, then hopefully things are still similar too. And if not, if I need to make an update video, I'll do that too. So go ahead and reset your UI layout. That way we all match. I'll just resize mine here because it blew up nice and big. Let's get into the edit tab, which is right down here on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Now, as with many things here in Resolve, there's a lot of ways that you can do different things. I'm gonna show you what I think is the easiest and quickest way for you guys to get your media in and start making your voiceover for your audio description. But there are different ways to do it, so if you have a different way, that's okay, as long as it works for you. So in Resolve here, I've got my media pool open, which is this guy right here at the top, and that's where we're gonna import our clips. So once you're in the edit tab, you got your media pool open, and now we're ready to bring in some of our footage. So the video that you're probably gonna be working with is like a completed movie or a completed show or play, whatever it might be, it's probably gonna be one long file. For me, I've got multiple files. I'm just gonna put together a little sequence here, but the easiest way to bring in your footage into Resolve is just to drag and drop it. Check this out. So I've got my uh, Finder here open. I work on a Mac. If you're on a PC, it should be very similar. But all I wanna do is select my clips and I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop it into the media pool right here. Now you might notice this message come up and that is change the project frame rate. So you want the project frame rate to match whatever your footage is in. Now for me, here in the United States, New Jersey, I usually work in 23.976, but whatever your video is in, that's what you want your project to be. So go ahead and click change, and it's gonna update to match whatever your project settings is for that video that you bring into Resolve. Because we wanna make sure that our audio is gonna match up with it and everything, so you want it to match whatever frame rate your video is in. So now you can see I've got all of my clips right here in my media pool, and the easiest way to add them into a timeline is if you don't see one down here, you can come and you can right click and you see timelines right here, create new timeline. So depending on how you have Resolve set up, when you hit create new timeline, you're gonna see this window. Now I have default project settings that I use, but you can uncheck that. So that way it'll match whatever your video clips are like we just saw when we brought them in, right? So you can come in here, you can name it whatever you want. I'm gonna call this, uh, let's see, AD voiceover. I wanna have one video track, that's fine. You're gonna have an audio track, that's fine and the rest you can probably pretty much leave as it is. So go ahead and click create. So now we have a timeline that has both an audio track and a video track, and we're gonna be able to bring our videos into it. So let me go ahead and grab my first clip. I'm just gonna click on it, drag and drop it down into my timeline. Now these video clips that I'm using do not have any audio associated with it. It's just stock footage that I got from ArcGrid. So there's no audio associated with it. Typically in a play or a movie or a TV show that you might be working with, or even your own project, you're gonna have some audio to it, right? You're gonna have dialogue, it's gonna be talking, and you're gonna have an audio track here. In my case, I don't, that's all right, no big deal. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just throw some music in here, so then at least I've got two audio tracks and we should be looking at the same thing here. So now I got an audio track in there, so we should be looking at the same thing. You should have one audio track and one video track. So let's say you bring in this long movie, something that you're working on, and the playback isn't that smooth, because if your computer's a little older, things might not be as smooth as you want it to be. It might be a little choppy. So how do we fix that so that it'll play back smoother? You've got a few different options of things that you can do. The first thing that I would start doing is I would come up to the playback menu 
you want to come down to uh, timeline proxy mode and you want to try either half resolution or quarter resolution. One of those is going to make it easier for Resolve to play back your video. And when we're doing our voiceovers, we don't need the highest quality video, right? Because we're mostly concentrating on the voiceovers for our project here. So if you need to use quarter, go ahead and use quarter. I'll throw it on quarter resolution and it's going to be just fine. You're not really going to notice a huge difference in your screen because a lot of times the video is so small here, so it shouldn't really make a big difference. But that's going to help speed up and just smoothen out that playback if it's a little choppy or something like that. When you're trying to play your videos back, this is going to help that out. The other thing you can do is come up to playback and come down to render cache and make sure that's on smart. So that's just going to render things in the background while uh, Resolve has some downtime if there's things that it can do in the background. So that'll help you out, you know, as you're working on your project too. So now you got your project set up here in Resolve and we're getting close to where we're going to want to start to learn how to actually do the voiceover part, right? But we've got to get this baseline stuff set up, get our clip in there, get our video in there that we're going to be doing the voiceover for. And this is the basics of how you get it set up. Now there's a lot more to it, like with Resolve. I mean, everything goes miles deep, but this is the basics and it should get you started on getting your project into Resolve here. So now we need to talk a little bit about your microphone, getting set up for that. Now, like I said, you do want to have it plugged in before you get into Resolve. So that way, once you get into Resolve, everything should be seen by the program. You shouldn't have to, you know, reconfigure stuff or anything like that. If you didn't plug it in yet, just close out Resolve, plug in your microphone, make sure it's set up on your computer settings in your sound or preferences, whatever it might be, and then open up Resolve and everything will be ready to go for when we need to patch that microphone into Resolve so that we can do our voiceover work. Some quick tips on recording. So we want good audio that's gonna go along with our video clip here for our audio description, right? So if you can afford a good microphone, get a good one. This one that I'm using here, eh, it's about a little less than a hundred bucks. You can get good ones that are, uh, you know, a little cheaper, um, but you know, in that just under hundred dollar range, you can find some pretty good microphones. You wanna make sure you're in a good environment. You wanna be somewhere where there's not a ton of extra noise going on. Uh, someplace that's not too echoey because you want the audio to sound good. You can always do a little post-processing to make that audio sound better, but let's try and do the best we can to get that initial recording to be super high quality. In my case, I'm down in my studio here. I'm actually surrounded by soundproof blankets, so that really deadens the sound. And um, also, the kind of microphone you're hearing me on now is a shotgun microphone on top of my camera. It's a Sennheiser mic. It does a really great job of coming right to me, picking me up, but not picking up anything else around the microphone. Now this little guy here, it does a pretty good job too of you know eliminating extra noise from around it. It's a cardioid mic, mic, it's just picking up in front of the microphone. So these are just things to think about that are gonna help you get a better recording. Some quick tips, you can always throw some blankets on the floor or go into a small closet, or I mean, you can even throw a blanket over your head in order to deaden the sound around you know your microphone and yourself you know, to help your recording just sound the best you can. Because the better you can get it when you first record it, the easier it's going to be to just apply a little bit of post-processing to sweeten it up a little bit and make it sound better, crisper, clearer, and not have to try and remove all kinds of extra noise and, you know, echoing and things like that. So you want to take those steps first to try and get the best recording you can out of the gate. And that's really just going to set you up for success on your project. So now that you got your microphone set up, your environment's good, you're ready to start recording, get back into Resolve here. Let's add a track so that we can record our voiceover onto its own track. So again, I have my project here and we want to create a new audio track here that is specifically for our voiceover. So I'm going to go ahead and come down here in the area below our audio track that we currently have. Now you can adjust these things if you just hover over different parts of the screen here. You know, you can make more room if you need it. But let's create a new track. I'm just going to come down here. I'm going to right click below my current audio track and say add a track. And we're going to go ahead and add in a mono track. Now most of the time you're going to want to use a mono track for your voiceover work because you want to hear it, you know, coming out of both your speakers. You know, our project's a stereo project. You want it to come out both the speakers evenly. So we're going to go with a mono track. You can do a stereo track. That's fine too. But in this case, we're going to go with a mono track. So go ahead and click on mono and it's going to add in a new track for us. Now I like to rename my tracks, keep everything organized. So I'm going to double click where it says audio two here, highlight that. And we're going to change that to VO for voiceover. Hit enter. And then it's now called voiceover. So before we jump over into Fairlight, where we're going to set up our voiceover and do our actual recording, one thing you want to change is where those recordings will be saved. It's easier if you just do it now, get it out of the way, so that way you don't start recording and then you can't find where your clips are. You're like, I don't know what to do. So let's get that set up real quick here. 
So in the edit page here, you want to come down to this little gear icon at the bottom, which is your project settings. You can also get to it by going to file and project settings. Once you get into project settings, you're going to see a window that looks like this. Now you want to come down on the left here to capture and playback. The first section here, you don't have to worry about. The second section down here is where we want to make some changes. So capture, you leave that as audio and video, that's fine. The video format, we're not recording video, so actually we don't have to worry about that. The codec, again, don't worry about that. And the next one right here, save clips to. Now this is gonna be where DaVinci Resolve saves your audio clips that we're gonna work on for our voiceover. So go ahead and click browse, and then you're gonna get another window here and just go find wherever you want these projects to be saved. For me, I like to save it in my project directory. I have an audio folder and that's where I save all of my audio. So I've navigated to my audio folder right here. I'm gonna select that and go ahead and click okay. Now this is project specific. So you can change this for each project. There is a default setting that gets applied you know, by default when you start a new project. But if I know I'm doing voiceover work, I know I'm recording into Resolve, I wanna set this to go to my project. So that way I don't have to hunt around for it. And I know exactly where Resolve is gonna put all the files that I'm recording. So once you got that set up, you picked your path, go ahead and click save. And now you're good to go. You know exactly where those files are gonna be. So that is all we're gonna do here in the edit tab. Now we're gonna jump into Fairlight where we're gonna get set up to record our voiceover. So jump over into Fairlight by clicking on the little musical notes here at the bottom of the screen. That's gonna jump you into Fairlight. Now we're in Fairlight here. And the first thing we need to do is patch our microphone into Resolve. We wanna make this microphone and input into Resolve so that way we can record directly into Resolve. The first thing we need to do is come on up to Fairlight at the top here. Then we wanna come down to Patch Input Output. Click on that and it's gonna open this window for you. So this is where we can patch different inputs to different things, tracks to different things. There's a lot you can do in here, but let's talk about the only thing that you need to worry about for your voiceover work. So up here on the left, we have source. Now we want this to say audio inputs. And if you click the little drop down, you see you've got different options, but we wanna use audio input. So go ahead and click on that. And now right here is my microphone. Now this particular microphone right here, it comes up as primary play interface cause it kind of works as an audio interface. But if you're using an audio interface, you should see the name of it here. Or if you're just using a microphone, you should see the name of the microphone there. So whatever shows up here, is what you're gonna be able to patch. And sometimes even with uh, my audio interface, it might just say, uh, you know, have numbers. So I've got four, you know, outputs from my audio interface and it'll just have numbers one through four. So you can just click on those numbers. You know, I know that, you know, my microphone input on that particular audio interface is number one. So you can use just that number one. Depends on what your setup looks like. It might look a little bit different than here, but uh, just give it a try and see how it works out. If you have questions or troubles, comment down below and I'll help you out the best I can. On the right here, we've got destination. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that drop down, and we wanna come down to track input. So go ahead, click on track input. And now you can see we've got our different tracks here. I've got my audio one left and right, which is that original track, right? Which should have your um, audio from your, your whatever it is that your video is, right? Whether it's your movie, your TV show, your film, your whatever it is, your project. So that's what those tracks are. Now we have VO. So that's the track that we created for our voiceover. Now there's only one because we created a mono track not a stereo track. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the VO so that it's highlighted like you see here. And I wanna click on both of my audio interface or my microphone channels right here. Once you have them all selected, come on down to the bottom of the screen here and hit patch. So now you can see they kind of change colors a little bit, right? So it looks like the, the first one here patched to this one and it's a mono track so you don't need both sides, which is fine. This should work out just fine for us. So once you got the patch made, you can go ahead and close this window by clicking on the little X and you should be good to go. The next step that we need to do is arm our track to record. And in order to do that, if you come down, we look at our voiceover track, you notice we've got three different uh, icons here. We have an R, which is the first one is arm for record, which is the one that we want. So you wanna turn that on. And what that does is it says, okay, DaVinci Resolve, this is where I want my track to go. This is how I want it to record. Just get that track ready to go. And if you look on the screen here, you can actually see the meter moving already. So I know that DaVinci Resolve is picking up my microphone. Now you might notice that you're hearing an echo or you're hearing yourself while you're recording. So we can adjust that. And that's called monitoring your audio, right? We can adjust how it's monitored. So I actually have an extra set of headphones hooked up to my microphone or to my computer, I'm working on a, a Mac mini, an M1 Mac mini here. So it doesn't really have external speakers. Well, it does, but they're not good. So I use headphones, but let's say I don't want to hear all that echoing, right? So we've got some options on how we can monitor our audio. So come on back up to the Fairlight menu here and come on down to input monitor style. 
Now you've got different options here on how you can monitor your input. So right now it's on auto, which means you're gonna hear while you're recording, you're gonna hear when you're not recording, which is why we're seeing the meters move now. But let's say I only wanna do it on input. I can click that and we're still hearing anything that's coming in. So that's not the one that I want. I can come back to Fairlight input monitor style and I'm gonna select record. So now this is only gonna let me hear, you know, in my headphones in this case, or on your speakers in your case, maybe, it's only gonna let you hear while you're actively recording. So the meters aren't moving now, and that's why, because we're only monitoring when we're actively recording. So that's okay. But if you wanna just make sure that your microphone's working, again, come back to Fairlight, input monitor style, and you can change it to auto, and you should be able to see those meters moving, which is telling you that your microphone's set up, you're good to record. So now you should be all set up, and your track is ready to record audio from your microphone. Now, when we're in Fairlight here, it is helpful to be able to see your video while you're recording, right? So you notice in the top right-hand corner here, we do see our video. It is a little small. If you don't see it, you might wanna click on your meters up here because that video is actually part of the meter strip here. So click on meters and that's gonna open that up for you. Now you can click on this guy right here, this little floating window option, and it's gonna open up the window. You can make it bigger, smaller, whatever you wanna do. You can put it on another monitor, I think, uh, if that's helpful for you. You wanna keep that you know, somewhere where you can see it because it's just gonna help, I think, make your audio description easier so you can describe what you're seeing. So for me, I'm just gonna actually pop it back into uh, its own window there. So with everything else done here, it looks like we're ready to start recording. So in order to record, you wanna take a look in this strip right up here above your timeline and we have the record button. So this is what you're gonna press when you're ready to go, you're ready to start recording. So if I just bring my playhead back to the beginning here, I'm gonna go ahead and hit record. And now we're recording here in Resolve. We can see my meters moving. We see that we've got audio from my top track here and we've got audio coming in on our voiceover track. And then in order to stop your voiceover from recording, you can just go ahead and click the stop button right here. So I'm gonna make my tracks a little bit bigger here just to see better by clicking on this guy right here and I'm gonna drag it a little bit bigger. And we can see we have our voiceover recorded right here. If we go back and play through it, I'm gonna actually turn off my arm to record. And then I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna play through it and let's see if we can hear it. I'm gonna throw on my headphones so I can hear here what's going on. Now let's play through and see if we hear it. In here in Resolve, we can see my meters moving. We see that we've got audio from... And there you go. You've made your first voiceover right here in DaVinci Resolve. It's not that hard to set up. It's pretty easy and pretty quick. Now, if you're running into problems and it's not recording, maybe you don't see your meters moving at all. Here's a couple things that you can check. First, check your patching. Make sure it's good. Make sure your microphone is patched to the channel that you created for your voiceovers. And even before that, if you don't even see the microphone in the patch menu there, go back, close Resolve, make sure that your microphone is hooked up to your computer, it's set up good, and that it, it it's actually being shown in your computer settings, so that way you know it's there. So when you open Resolve, it should be there and you shouldn't have any problems. If your patching looks good, everything else seems like it's good, but you're still not seeing your meters move and it's not recording when you try hitting the record button up here, make sure that you have armed your track to record. Make sure this R button right here is highlighted red. Otherwise your track's not gonna be ready to record even if you push the button that's up here. So make sure you're armed to record. And finally, make sure that you're hitting the right record button up here in your toolbar so that Resolve starts actually recording. Since I just recorded a little random sample, I'm gonna delete that. Now I'm gonna actually try and describe what's going on in the scene. All right, so now that we got our little sample, we know that our microphone's recording. I've actually gone ahead and added in a few more clips to my little sequence here. So now I'm gonna try and just do uh, some audio description here of describing the events that I'm seeing on the screen. Now, don't judge. I don't know anything about how to do it the right way or you know the specifics of how you're supposed to do this. So I'm just gonna uh, kind of make it up as I go here. So don't judge. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to see something that comes out looking okay. Now, when we record through it, I don't have a script or anything like that. I'm just gonna make it up on the fly here. But if you do have a script or you have it written down on what you wanna say, I'm gonna show you how you can put that on the screen here so you can set it up to read it as you know those points of the video come up so you know what you want to say. It will take a little bit more time to get that set up, but if you know what you want to say and you want to hit those marks, I'll show you how you can do that right here in Resolve. So let's go ahead, let's roll through this uh, sequence here. I'm gonna try a little description and we'll see how that works out. So I'm throwing my headphones here. 
and our microphone's good. We're all set up. I'm going to come back in Resolve here. I'm going to arm my track to record, and then I'm just going to go ahead, hit record, and I'm going to watch my little screen up here, describe it as it comes. So here is using this microphone down here, and uh, let's see what we can do here. Remember, don't judge. All right, let's go. So I did move my clips over a little bit too. Just got a little dead space here. So let's see what happens. A woman's riding her bike next to a farm field on a dirt road. The bike's red and has a basket on the front of it. She's wearing a hat and sunglasses. She gets off the bike and walks out into a field. She sets up a picnic and pulls out a book and starts reading through the book. Turning page by page, she reads the book. The red bike sits next to the cornfield. She finishes her picnic, jumps on the red bike, and starts riding next to the cornfield, away from the field. All right, there you go. I don't know that that was good. Actually, I'd probably say it was pretty bad. But you get the idea here. We were able to add in a voiceover on top of our clips and really just kind of put in some description to what we're seeing on screen. Now, obviously, if you have a, a movie or a show or a play or something, you're going to use a lot more smaller segments, probably. Uh, you know, it's not going to be one long thing like this, maybe. But this is how you can just hit record and say things as you see them on the screen. And now what we can do is actually go back and kind of fine tune that a little bit. And we can make cuts where we need to and adjust where the text is coming in or not the text, but where our uh, voiceover is coming in on the video. But before we get to that, I'm going to show you how to cut up this a little bit and just kind of make it fit where we want it to. I just want to show you how you can add in some uh, text to appear on the screen. So that way, if you have your script, you know what you want to say, you know what points of the video you want to say it, you can put it in here and it, it'll probably just make your job a little bit easier instead of trying to think of it on the fly. So it does take a little bit more work, but let's check this out. So in order to do that, we're going to want to jump back into the edit tab. So that's this icon right here. Go ahead and click on there and jump back into the edit tab. So once I'm in the edit tab, you can see my sequence here and we've got my music right here. And then I've got my voiceover track down here. So what we want to do is put basically text above our video clips. So that way we know what we want to say. And it's pretty easy to do that. You want to come up to your effects library, which is up here at the top of the screen. Go ahead and click on that and then come down to titles right here. Now, all you really need is just a basic title. Uh, if you want it to scroll, you can, um, but just the basic text is really all that you need. And you just click on it, drag it down and drop it into your timeline on a video track above the current video track you're working on. And again, if you don't know how to make a new video track, you can right click on any one of your tracks and just say add a track and that's going to add a track for you. So now what I can do is just zoom in on my timeline here a little bit and I could just select my text. Make sure you got your inspector open right here. And now we can add in whatever text we want. So I'm just going to come up here and, uh, you know, maybe in this first scene here, I want to say a woman rides her bike next to a cornfield on a dirt road. So that's what I want to say. So if I bring my playhead and I click over here, now we can see it's on screen. All right, it doesn't quite fit. You may have to, you know, adjust the size of your text a little bit, um, you know, or maybe put some returns in there. And you can position the text wherever you want by playing with some of the different tools down here. And once you kind of set it up once, you should be good to go. And then you can just, you know, copy that text. So let's say I only want it on, you know, the first uh, clip here and come and select my text, drag it back. And, you know, maybe that's fine. Maybe you want to make it a little shorter. It depends on your clip and what you're trying to say and how you want it to fit in there. So now when I play through, you're gonna see the text pop up. A woman's riding her bike next to a farm field on a dirt road. Okay, so you hear my voiceover in there, didn't match up with what I wanted to say there, and that's okay for now, but we can put the text in there first before you record, and that way everything should pop up You know when you want it to. Now you do have to adjust the text, put it where you want, and that's gonna help you with your dialogue and your voiceover as you're going through and recording it. So that could be super helpful if that's something that you're interested in. And like I said, I don't know if you're supposed to script the whole thing out before you do it, or if uh, you're supposed to just kind of go at it on the fly. I don't know, you know, I've never studied this stuff, but you guys probably know what you should be doing. So that's just a little tip there, using the text to put it on the screen. And if you find it helpful, definitely go ahead and do that. So we're gonna get into how to replace specific sections of dialogue using the automatic dialogue replacement tool which is super handy and super helpful. But before we get there, let's talk about 
how do we cut up our audio clips a little bit here so we can move them around and make them fit where we want? Because maybe you were a little late coming in on something or whatever and we need to move the clip. So here's how we do that. I'm still in the edit tab here and uh, I'm just gonna actually go ahead and delete this text for now because I don't need it. So I'm gonna scroll down and in my uh, voiceover track here, we can see where I said different things, right? When maybe we need to move that around a little bit. So it's super easy just to put my playhead wherever I wanna make a cut. And if I wanna cut only the voiceover track, you've got a few ways that you can do that. You can select the clip, although then you're gonna to have to select the clip every single time you make a cut. And so that way you don't affect your video clip. Or you can come over here and you see this little icon. Let me change the size of uh, our audio track here. It's kind of huge. So. If you see this little icon right here, it's called the auto track selector. Now, any track that has this button highlighted, like you see it right here, is gonna be affected by any cuts that you make. So in this case, let's say we only wanna cut our voiceover track, we can turn off the auto track selector for the rest of our tracks. So very easily, you can just click on the tracks that you do not want to affect. So in this case, my voiceover track, I do wanna affect that. My audio track one up here, I do not, so I'm gonna uncheck that, as well as my video track one, and if this was my text layer, my video track two, I do not wanna affect them when I try to cut the audio clip. So I'm gonna come down here, and to make a cut on the clip, you've got a few ways to do it. One way that I like to do it is just using Command or Control B, and it's gonna put a cut right there on the clip for you. The other thing that you can do is use the blade tool, which is this guy right here. So if I click on that, now anywhere I hover over with my blade, I can just click and it's just gonna make those cuts for me. So sometimes you can see it's kind of snapping a little bit there. If you don't like that, you might need to zoom in a little bit and that might help you get a little more precise with where you wanna make your cuts. I'm gonna just zoom back out. Then I can come back and you know grab the little pointer tool right here and I can select sections like this and just delete it if I don't want it there. Now I can just grab the portion that I made the two cuts on either side of and I can move it around and place it wherever I want. So this is probably gonna come in handy if you've got big spaces between your different uh, voiceover sections or if you just need to move things around like I mentioned. So it's an option if you need to make cuts and shuffle things around a little bit. That's the easiest and most basic way on how you can make some cuts. And just for your reference and just so you guys know, you can also do the exact same thing right in the Fairlight tab. So jumping back into Fairlight, the musical notes here, I can come in here and make my cuts here if I uh, come over to say this clip, let's bring my playhead over. Now when I'm in here, I'm gonna use the command or control B because you notice in our toolbar here, we don't have the, uh, the blade tool. So in Fairlight here, you would just use command or control B and it's gonna go ahead and make the cuts just like we did in the edit tab. And I can select my audio part there, just hit delete and it's gonna take it away. Now be careful if your keyboard is one of the larger keyboards like, uh, like mine over here, right? We got this big long one, so I've got the delete key here as well as a delete key over here. Now, one of them will ripple delete, which means it'll grab all the footage and push it over when you hit that delete button. And the other delete will just delete the clip but not move anything. So if you see that, just be careful on which key you're using and make sure you're not uh, moving things when you don't want them to move. So let's move ahead here. We're gonna talk about the automated dialogue replacement tool. Now, this is a tool here in Resolve that's super handy. It's helpful. It can help you re-record portions of your voiceover. Let's say there's a part that you don't like and you decided you want to put something else in there. Well, how can we do that? Now you can just record onto a new track, but we can also use the automated dialogue replacement tool here to help show you the words, tell you when to come in and just guide you through that new voiceover that you want to put in a particular spot on your timeline or you know in your video. So let's get into checking this out. I'm going to explain what it is, how it works, and then uh, we'll give it a try. And one of the cool things here is you can do this multiple times and it's gonna keep all these different takes for you and then you can just pick the one that worked out the best. So, all right, let's check this out. So we are in Fairlight here and in order to get to the automated dialogue replacement tool, look along the top here and we have ADR right here with our microphone. So go ahead and click on that. Now this is the ADR automated dialogue replacement window. Let's just run over this window real quick. I'm gonna explain what some of these things are and how to use it. And then we're gonna go ahead and give it a try. And I think this is something that anybody who is uh, working on audio description projects, I think this would come in really handy for you. So we've got three different sections here. We have list, record, and setup. So let's start with the setup section here. So that way we can set everything up and then we can just go ahead and put in our cues on where we wanna record new dialogue. So I'm in the setup section here. We have record and playback setup at the top. 
And the first section here is pre-roll. So what is pre-roll? That is how long is the video gonna play before it starts recording or before you are supposed to come in and add in your new dialogue. So in this case, I have four seconds and that works out fine. Then we have post-roll. So post-roll says how long should it go after, you know, the recording is done. So maybe, you know, you're recording, whatever you're saying takes a little bit longer than you expected. So how long is it gonna keep going? In this case, I put two seconds. Next we have record source. So where are you recording from? I have a microphone right here. So you wanna click this drop down and make sure that you've got your microphone selected. Record track. Now what track do you wanna record on? So I wanna to record to my voiceover track. And the cool thing about this tool is that it's gonna put any new recordings on another layer inside that same track. And we're gonna be able to take a look at those different layers and pick whatever take that we want because we can try this a couple times and then just pick the best one. So I want it to record onto my voiceover track. So you can click that drop down and click the track that you want to use. Now the guide track next, you can use that if you want to. You're probably not going to need it, but you can choose a track that's going to guide you as far as when to come in and what's happening in your video clip. So you can try it out and see if it works for you. You may not need it. It depends on your project. And you can change the record file name here if you want or you can just leave it as the default. It's up to you what you want to do with that. Now down here, we've got different character setups. So if, you know, say there's three different people, they're all working on the audio description for a project, you can save specific settings for specific people if that's helpful. So I'm going to add in a new one and just uh, put one in for me here. So I'm going to call it J, hit enter. Now, anything that I change in here, it's going to be for me and when I'm doing the voiceover work here. So Maybe I wanna see things a certain way or whatever it is, then we can set it up for each individual person. Moving down here, if you click on any one of these, it's gonna open up and these are different options. You can have it beep to an in point. So when you're gonna come in, it can beep. So I'm gonna turn that off because uh, I don't need that right now. It can beep when you're supposed to come in, like right at the point when the actual recording starts. I'll leave that one on. And again, if you click on any one of these, it's gonna have more options in there for you. You can use the count in. So how many seconds do you want to be counted in? So you're going to see on the screen, you know, what are five, four, three, two, one, or what, however many you pick. In this case, I've got three. So it'll give me three second count in. So I know when to get ready to come in for my voiceover. The video streamer here, this is going to give you uh, lines that come across the screen. That's going to help just guide you on when to come in for your particular clip. So I'm going to go ahead and turn those on and you can change the color there if you want. The next one here, on-screen cue text style. So what this is gonna do is allow you to put the text on the screen and have it come up when you should start talking. So you've got different options here on how you can have that look. You can try it out if you want. You can do a sample text here just to see what it's gonna look like. And it comes in handy to kind of tweak this a little bit. And I'll show you how to add the text in so it pops up on the screen in a second here. So just to close any of these, just double click on them. You've got smart timeline here. This is gonna allow either the playhead to move across the screen or the playhead's gonna stay still while the timeline moves across the screen. Just depends on how you wanna view it. I'm gonna leave that off and then mixing control. You're not gonna need that, so don't worry about it for now. So that is the setup. Now let's go to the the list section. Now, if you have uh, you know a program where you can write up a whole bunch of cues, I know there's files where you can make a whole cue list and what to say and all that. That's a little out of my wheelhouse. I know you can do it and then just import all that right here into Resolve. But if you don't have that, which I don't, uh, we're just gonna make some cues on our own as far as where we should come in and where we wanna make our voiceovers. So let's uh, make a new cue here. So in order to make a cue, we need to select an area on our timeline where we want to record. There's a few ways you can do that. You can use in and out points. So let's say I wanted to replace this clip right here. I can come to the beginning of the clip, I can press I for in, and then come to the end of the clip and press O for out. That'll set that. Let me show you another way. I'm just gonna clear these marks here. I'm gonna clear my in and out. Now I can use this tool right here, which is the range selection mode, and I can just click on my one clip and it's gonna highlight that clip for me. So now that that clip is highlighted, I can come back in my list over here and I just wanna say create new queue. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click new queue. Now we can see right here, let's see if I make this just a little bit bigger here. It's got, this is cue number one. It's the first one that I made. It's got a character here, which it doesn't have anything there just yet. And then it's got dialogue, which it doesn't say anything yet. We're gonna add that in. And then it's got the time in and out where this is gonna be placed in our timeline. And it tells you how long the clip is gonna be. So if I select my clip here, I can actually come up to character and this is gonna be Jay, this is gonna be me. So I'm gonna click on that. It tells me my character. Now for the dialogue that I might want to add in, 
I'm just gonna click on the dialog here. Now I can type it in right up here. All right, so let's say I wanted to say this, riding a red bike down a dirt road, a woman comes towards you. So that's what I wanna say. So now that we have this cue set up, it's gonna show me those words on the screen. So let's head over to the record tab here. I'm gonna click on that. And now you can see it's right here, right? We see it on our screen. And if it's even easier, you can pop this screen out by hitting this little window right here. All right, let's bring this up here, make it a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on. So we can see the text doesn't quite fit on our screen here. So let's go fix that real quick so we can actually see all of what we wanna say. So I'm gonna jump back into my list here. I'm gonna select my queue that we're working on, come back up here on the top, and I'm just gonna put a return in here. Okay, and then come back to the record and just select my clip again. And now you can see the text is right here and we can see it on the screen. So now we're all set up, we can replace this dialog with a new dialog that we're gonna record. So you've got some buttons up here in the record menu. So you wanna se first select whatever cue you're working on, assuming you're gonna have a couple, cause you can set up a whole bunch of cues before you even get started recording, just so that everything is organized and set up. You're good to go, you can just start recording. So before we start recording our voiceover, there's one other setting I want you to turn on and that is audio track layers, because all of these new recordings we're gonna do are gonna be put in different layers on the same track and we wanna be able to see them. So come on up to your view menu and then come all the way down here and choose show audio track layers. Now if I turn mine off, you'll see my, my layers get big again. And if I turn it back on, now you can see we've got more space up there and that's gonna show us our layers for the recordings that we're about to make. So let's pick a clip that we're gonna redo here using the ADR panel. So I wanna redo uh, this clip right here. So let's hear what it says, and then we're gonna come up with some new wording that we wanna use in place of it. So let's listen to this real quick. A woman's riding her bike next to a farm field on a dirt road. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is select our range. Where do we want this new dialogue to go? And the fastest way to do it is using this little guy right here. This is the range selection mode. So go ahead and click on that, and all we have to do is click on the clip. Now, if you have a big long clip, you're gonna to wanna to use or set in and out points using the letter I and the letter O on your keyboard. And that's what you can see up here on the screen. These little points right here, that's the in and the out point. So when you go somewhere and you press I, it's gonna set the first point. O is gonna set the second point. Once you have the range selected that you want to use for the new dialog, we wanna come over here and uh, in our list view right here, we're gonna go ahead and click new queue. Now in here, if you have a character set up, you can uh, select that. It'll be right here in a drop down. I did set up mine, but then I got rid of it because I was having some issues. So now I'm just going with, uh, with no character. So I'm gonna come over here to the dialogue section, click in there, and then I'm gonna click up in the top area here and I'm gonna put in some new text of what I actually want to say now. Okay, so what I wanna say is this, a woman is riding her red bike down a dirt road next to a cornfield. That's what I wanna say. So once you do that, you can just click down here in the open area. It's gonna unselect your uh, your queue here that we just created. So I wanna go back over into the record tab now, jump over in here, and we wanna go ahead and select the queue that we wanna work with. Now you may have a whole ton of them. In this case, I just have one. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it. And you notice that uh, it's kinda not appearing on the screen the right way. That's okay for the moment. Let's just test it out and see if it's gonna work here. So we have this button right here, rehearse. I'm gonna go ahead and hit that and see how it works. So you can see our count in over here on our screen. And you could see that our text was highlighted. It had a little progress bar that came across the screen. It's gonna tell us how much time is left in our queue that we made. So now I'm gonna unselect that. Let's jump back into the list view here. I'm gonna select my uh, text here again, and I'm just gonna put a return in here so that way I can see it all on screen. Now you would think Resolve would do this for you. Maybe it does, I haven't played with it a whole ton, so I'm just gonna hit enter here and that should work out just fine. So now when I click on the text again down here, we can see in our little window, it appears just fine. So once you have that set, let's jump over back into the record tab here. And I'm gonna pop out my screen just so it's a little bit bigger so I can read the words. I'm gonna select my cue that I wanna go through and work with here. And you can rehearse it a few times if you want. I'm just gonna go for it. We're just gonna hit record here and see what happens. So uh, let's go for it. A woman is riding her red bike down a dirt road next to a cornfield. So now you can see once I did that, up here I have my take and you can do as many takes as you want and it'll layer it in the same audio track. So one of the things that you can do is just try it a bunch of times, see how it works out. I'm gonna try it a few more times here 
and we'll get a couple more tracks here and then I'll show you how you can listen to each one of your takes. All right, so I got two takes. Now, if I want to listen to it and see how they sound, I'm going to actually turn off the R right here. So my track is no longer armed because in my headphones, I was hearing an echo from here anyway. So I'm going to turn that off and you are going to hear whichever track is the highest, whichever one's at the top. So in this case, this one right here is at the top. Put this guy back. Use my little arrow tool here. This one, this one is at the top, so that's the one you're going to hear when we play through. So let's listen and see how that sounds. A woman is riding her red bike down a dirt road next to a cornfield. Okay, so now you can see if I grab the original and bring that one up to the top, now we'll hear the original. Riding her bike next to a farm field on a dirt road. So whichever one you drag and move to the top is gonna to be the one that you hear. Now, if you're having trouble seeing the layers and where the things are recorded, check this out and check these settings. You wanna make sure that you've got these uh, checked on properly here. So timeline down to layered audio editing, make sure that that is checked on. And then you wanna come over to the view and you wanna come down to show audio track layers. So that way you're gonna be able to edit those layers. You can see those layers and you should be good to go. So when you have your different takes, you can come in here and select the one you want and rate them by stars. Maybe you've got, you know, five or six takes, different ways of saying things. You want to see what different ones sound like. You can go ahead and just select the one that you like. You can highlight it with the stars here. And down in your timeline, just make sure whichever clip that you want to use is the one that appears on the top right up here. So let's say I'm happy with this take. I went through, I did all of my uh, ADR recording, the dialogue replacement, anywhere I wanted to replace. Well, now I can come back to my view and I can turn off the audio track layers. And now I'm just gonna see that last one that was on the top. So if we play through it, that's what we should hear. A woman is riding her red bike down a dirt road next to a cornfield. Now it is a little fast. So obviously that's probably not the best way to, you know, handle that particular clip. But once we have it recorded here and you get what you like, you can just grab it and move it around if you want but you're gonna see, we do see it underneath here. We see another clip under there. So you may have to go back into your track layer view and kind of play around with them a little bit. You know, maybe you wanna move them all at once or maybe you just wanna get rid of the other ones that you don't need. Maybe you wanna take the good one and drop it onto another track. So then you can just mute these other two or something like that. It's up to you. There's a lot of ways to do it. You gotta play with it, find out what works best for you. But that's how you use the ADR tool here in DaVinci Resolve, it's super handy and can really just help when you've got to replace dialogue in a video clip that you've already made. Maybe you want to change the wording. You can see it on the screen here. It gives you the countdown and it's just a really handy tool that can help out a lot while you're working on your audio description project. So ADR is there. Use it if you need it. Try it out. Let me know what you think. Comment below if you have any troubles or any problems and I'll try and help you out the best that I can with all that ADR stuff. Now, once you have all your audio recorded and everything's in there, you got your wording, your audio description, you're good to go, your voiceover work is done. The next step that I would do is go through and start working on some audio processing. So there's a lot of things here that I'm not gonna go through everything in this video, but I will link them either in the description or I'll pin a comment where I'm gonna link a whole bunch of different videos where you can learn how to set your levels. You wanna have good levels on your audio clips so that people can hear it, right? So you wanna set your audio levels to about minus 10 dB. So that way you've got good signals coming in, everybody can hear it good, and it's not too loud, not too quiet, it's just right. And I'll leave a link for a video that teaches you how to set your levels here in DaVinci Resolve. That'll be helpful if you don't know how to do it. And then once you've got your level set, you wanna look at some other things. You know, you wanna look at using the EQ a little bit. I have a whole EQ crash course that can help you out and it's not too hard once you get the hang of it. And a little bit of EQ work can really go a long way and do a great job as far as helping your audio sound better, right? Because we all have different microphones in different situations, different environments, and sometimes you're gonna get harsh sounds in there that just don't sound good. You wanna clean it up a little bit. And EQ is one of those tools that can really help clean up your audio and get rid of some of those harsh sounds. Another thing you might wanna look into using is a little bit of compression and some dynamics. And I have a video on that I'll link to as well. Dynamics can really help just bring your sound together, make it sound better. It can, you know, reduce some of your peaks and boost up some of your low end stuff. There's all kinds of stuff that you can do there with your dynamics. You can help reduce some background noise using an expander or a gate. And I'll link to that video. You can check that out if uh, that's something that you're interested in. But a lot of these things are going to make small changes that over time are going to really 
improve the sound of your audio, right? Because if we're watching movies or TV or plays or whatever it might be, and the audio description that's in there, if it doesn't sound good, it's going to be hard to watch. And for those that are just able to listen and can't actually see anything, if the audio doesn't sound good, I mean, it's it's just hard to sit through, right? We've probably all watched videos where the video looks awesome, but the audio is terrible. And it's hard to sit there and listen to it and, and watch that. So you got to keep that in mind. You want your audio to sound good, not only from the perspective of your audio description and being able to get the details in there that you want so the viewer can understand what's going on, but just the quality of your audio. It's super important that it sounds good. It's clear. It's crisp. It's easy to understand. And doing a little bit of post-processing on your audio is going to really help make a big difference for the listener at the end of the day. So one last thing I do want to show you here in this video is how to export just your audio. Because you went through, you made the whole video here, and I'm assuming, I'm not 100% sure on this, but I'm assuming that you only need to export your audio and somebody else is going to combine that together with whatever the final project is. Now, if you do need to export the whole thing, you know, your video, your other audio tracks and your voiceover track as well. I'll link to a video there too for settings that I use for YouTube. Depends on your situation on who the client is or who you're exporting it for. They may have their own requirements, but I'll just link to a video for the settings that I use for YouTube exporting in both 1080 as well as 4K. So you'll probably find that helpful. But let's say you just need to export the audio. Let's jump back into Resolve and I'm gonna show you how to export just the audio here in DaVinci Resolve. All right, back in Resolve here, we want to get into the Deliver tab, which is the little rocket right here. So go ahead and click on that, and that's going to bring us over into the Delivery tab. So now my clips here are kind of in the middle of my timeline. I just kind of put them there when I started. So I'm going to set in points and out points, but most of the time you can use this right here, the entire timeline to export your projects. So I'm going to come here and uh, I'm going to put my playhead a little forward there and say I want to start there. I'm going to press I right there, and it looks like my out point is set just fine already. Next, I want to come over to my render settings. If you don't see them, make sure this little guy's open right here. And I'm going to scroll over and there's actually an option here for audio only right here, audio only. So you can click that and that's going to give you a good starting point. You're going to want to put in a file name right here. Give it a location. Where do you want to save these? And now you want to render. How do you want to render it? Do you want individual clips? Probably not. You probably want to do a single clip so it matches up with whatever video you're working on. It's gonna be one long clip and that's probably gonna be what you need. Now the video, you notice everything is unchecked here because we're not exporting the video in this particular case. We're just gonna export the audio. So I'm gonna click on the audio tab here and you've got different formats here that you can export it in. I would just leave it at the default settings and that's probably gonna work out fine for you. So you've got QuickTime, the codec, you can choose your different codecs here. You can pick which might work best for you. Sample rate, I'm going to leave that the same as the project. Bit depth, I'm just going to leave that at the default as well. And on output track here, you want to make sure that you have your bus one selected. And that's going to be just your main output from DaVinci Resolve. Now, if you have multiple tracks and you need separate files for whatever reason, you can check this on render as discrete audio tracks. I don't think it's going to be necessary, but it's an option there if you need to. And if you have any questions on any of these settings, you can always check out the DaVinci Resolve manual. It's really good. It's really helpful. I use it all the time. Yes, I know it's like 3,500 pages or something like that, but you can search through the PDF and that works out pretty good. And if you have an idea of what you're looking for, it's not too bad. So you can always check that out too. So once you have all your settings set, just come down to the bottom here. You want to add it to the render queue. And once you click on that, you're going to see it pop up over here on the right hand side. And then all you have to do is go ahead and hit render. And that's going to render your file out of DaVinci Resolve. You should get your audio only file and you should be good to go for your audio description file. All right, guys, that wraps up this video on voiceovers, on audio description, on using the ADR tools, how to export your audio only. We covered a lot of stuff in this video and I'm sure you guys are going to have questions. So if you do, leave a comment down below and I try to respond to every comment and answer everybody's questions the best that I can and really try and help you guys out. Part of the reason I got this YouTube channel, so I can help you guys out out there. So I'm sure you might have specific uh, requirements and things like that for your audio description projects. So you guys are gonna know more about that than I do. I don't really know too much about it. Um, but if you have other suggestions or settings you think you should use or anything like that, comment with that down below too, because that can be helpful to not only classmates and people you know, going through the same program, but other people around the world who might be trying to do the same thing, it can be helpful for them too. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. I appreciate you sticking around. Again, thank you to Margaret and Ryerson University for the opportunity to sit in with you guys on a class, learn more about audio description, what it is, how it worked. 
It's really cool, never even heard of it before. So it was awesome to learn about it and just understand what it is and how you can really help people. If you guys appreciated the video, you learned a little something, could you give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you wanna know anything more about DaVinci Resolve, definitely check out my channel. Any issues you might run into as you're getting started, I've got tons of videos on all that stuff, all the common questions people have. So lots of videos to help you out if you need any help as you're starting to learn DaVinci Resolve because it's a tough program. It is pretty tough. And if you want to help support the channel, check out my Shopify page. Got some EQ presets down there, some other freebies for you. You can also buy me a coffee. Love me some good coffee. There's a link to that in the description below as well as a whole bunch of other links in the description. Affiliate links that don't cost you anything extra but do help our channel here and everything that we do. So thank you guys for hanging in there with me. Best of luck on your audio description projects and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Peace.